God, it's so nice to have these not in a stupid pile. <laughs> Get this crap out of here, though. Ooh, that looks spicy. Oh, unload. No, we want loaded. What's up, everyone? This is Heist. Today we're playing Derail Valley again with mods, but this time with the correct mods. I felt really stupid after last time, after the creator of several of the mods I was using, Zybot, came in and it, into the comments and noticed that I'd been playing with a more than a year old version. And I did a fresh install, but I, I'm not sure what I goofed up. Um, probably me not understanding how the mod manager works. So um, I went and downloaded the new versions and I also got a couple more mods. So we got a heads up display, uh, correct version of the air brake, the booklet organizer, which was just just great right there. Mile an hour mod, because, uh, you know, who wants to say kilometers an hour? Uh, passenger jobs, which I need to get a license for, apparently. Um, and then also his sound mod. So we'll, uh, you know, maybe get to screw around with that a little bit down the road here. But um, yeah, so the license for the passenger trains is $100,000. And I have not that and i also still have to pay a lot there um and i had a untelevised recording where i was messing around with these mods last night where um i had some operational issues and i've increased my fees so you know good stuff anyways long story short we need to make a lot of money and gasoline to city southwest 65 grand with an easy time bonus i think that's gonna be the meal of the day with all the new mods here. So we got to figure out where these cars are. It's FH86, and we also got to grab a steam engine, I think, because we want to try that out. There we go. Now, I believe one of the neat things about Zybox mods is you come in, and the steam engine has pressure. So that's nice. You don't have to fire it up from cold. And then we kick the door open. Okay, so no coal in it. And I at the one of the issues I was running into last night was I didn't understand um, the amount of coal and how that worked out. It was very easy to overfill the fire, so we're, we're going to keep it just nice and gentle. Get the blower rolling here, and, and I'll see if I can't just smoke the thing out. All right, much better. Much better color. Last time it was just rolling black no matter what it did, so uh, that's all good. And now, look at these wheels. These wheels are white. Well, so a lot of people commented on the last video that uh, I needed to have the skin mod, I had to use uh, the comms radio. And it's got, it works, see? It's just that the skin doesn't work all the way. The trucks work, but that's it. The, the rest of the uh, the Rio Grande logo should be on the side of the tender. And it's uh, the same thing with the, the steam engine, except uh, the wheels don't even work. So I've just got white walls and nice black painted trucks, but uh, nothing on the rest of it. Oh, well. But yeah, this is uh, this is a lot of info here on the uh, on the heads up mod, um, so that's gonna be kind of neat. And I'm gonna have to get used to bars and and all that fun stuff too. But let's roll this thing out on the table and uh, see if we can't uh, start aiming ourselves towards the yard here. Let's just wander this thing over. And in the real life, you have a one mile an hour rule as fast is the speed you can go on and off the turntable, but you know, we can just send it, so. All right, so I'm gonna get this thing out on the main and then we'll stop and figure out where the, uh, figure out where the train's at. Oh lordy, look at all, <laughs> looking at all the values doing what they're doing. That's actually really neat, but it's a lot to look at. Okay. Well, we're parked here. Let's see um, the FH-86. FH-86. All the way up here. Okay. Let's line ourselves in. Alright, so we should be able to back onto this thing, accept the job, and go. I might have to pay some minuscule fee, whatever I can afford with my $15,000 or whatever it is. There we go. Let's come out on it. My pressure's really not come up at all. Yeah, that's okay. Well, now that's actually about the rate that I would expect the gauge to disappear. 
I was really working against it and I didn't have a good fire. So apparently, do I need more coal? I've got a nice ha hazy gray. Give it another scoop. See what it does. I'm feeling this out. I've read a little bit about it, so I didn't want to be entirely clueless, but I also wanted to uh, try and give it a, a live react as well. So we'll see, uh, we'll see how it goes. I wanted to be on the top of the tender here. Okay, yeah, we are lined all the way, and we've got a grade crossing coming up. So we're going to have to be loud with the, the, the fun thing. And I still have some water in the, uh, the sight glass, but uh, the injector uses pressure pretty significantly if you get after it, so I didn't want to lose all the pressure I have. That sounds awesome. <laughs> um, it's not terribly loud for whatever reason. I'm not sure why the whistle's so quiet, but um, that's a great recording of a five chime. Not sure exactly what it is, but sounds like it's a five, and it uh, it does it, it does feel a little bit easier to deal with. It feels like he may have done some work on the quilling because it's like. I don't know, maybe I'm just getting practiced with it, but it feels like it's really easy to just quill the whistle now. <laughs> oh, that's just that's just too much fun. Okay, we've not increased our pressure situation yet. I've got the blower open wide. So we're gonna have to see what's going on there. But perhaps we'll focus on coupling into the, um, the explosive boys first and see if we can't level yet another uh, industry on accident. So, <laughs> I guess yard, not an industry in this case. Squeeze it down here. My boiler water level is going down. Interesting. Just nice and gentle. Firmly grasp it. That's a little too nice and gentle for my taste. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> a little bit more speed. Actually, if you couple too slow, you, the pins sometimes don't actually drop. So there is kind of a, a minimum coupling speed. Unless you got someone back there jiggling the lever for you. But we are all tied in. This is now going to charge. Um, let's see, do we have it? We have an equalizing reservoir. Oh, that's for the locomotive. I guess we could go hop on the cars. Oh, look at this. Yeah, you can watch the, the brake pipe is charging per car. So I can go... I can come all the way to the back, and I could see that I've got 4.11, you know, bar, and the aux reses are still recharging. That, that is, uh, I never mentioned it in the break video, because I didn't want to make things too confusing with all the new terms and everything, but the, uh, the reservoirs on the car are called the auxiliary reservoir. And so you can see those charging up. That's pretty cool. It's a nifty bit of, bit of thing here. So, blower is wide open. The heat yield is going down. Temperature is in the same spot. And if I close... That, okay, that is closed. This is open. So... I guess I was putting more water in, theoretically. But it was... Yeah, it decreases the pressure pretty significantly fast. And you can... I mean, you could really dump water in there. And that's probably a realistic amount for the pressure to go down for the amount of water I just put in. But... Yeah, you, <laughs> you can't go that fast. Um, but Zybok and I were talking a little bit about it, and um, the thought on it is that, you know, uh, for people that don't really know all these stupid little details, uh, you could get into trouble if you don't have faster blower and faster 
uh, faster steam, or faster blower and faster injectors. So, I don't know, that scoop, I don't know if it's a mistake. It's still just a hazy gray. It's hard to tell, do we have a, a heat yield, heat yield's now going up. So that's good. We haven't choked it off yet. So, we'll toss another scoop on, I suppose. The coal use is now going down. The heat yield's still going up. up. This is a lot to look at at once. Sounds like the uh, the brakes have finally charged all the way. Anyways, let's, uh, let's go sort out... I want to have some amount of... I mean, this isn't a tonnage train by any mean, but I want to have a fair bit of pressure. So we can get up cooking to speed pretty fast here. So let's see, do we have any fees that we can afford? Yes, a couple. Okay. Okay. That's all the fees that I can pay. So I guess um I guess we'll try and do the thing now. <laughs> Alright. Oh no, don't drop it. Nope, nope. Buttons, buttons. There we go. Okay. <laughs> this is like the easiest run, but you know, I still want to do it kinda quick. So bar all the way forward. Kick the brake off. Rip the bar the throttle open. Let's go. Oh god, I can have it just about wide open. Oh, and it's quarter slipping! That's so cute. That's accurate, too. They actually do that. I love that. Okay, uh, now do we shut the blower? Now the, uh, that changes our oxygen supply, and we want to be trying to cook and make some amount of pressure. What is our stack doing? It's a little dark, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it. I don't know. Still, I, mean, I guess it's just kind of gray. Let's get some scoops going, I think. I think we're just drastically under-firing it is the problem. Yeah, I love that. Okay, so this speed is now in miles an hour. Oh god, I should have brought the bar back a million years ago. It's alright. The speed's now in miles an hour. Even though it says KPH. Or KMH. So we have to be kind of careful. So I haven't seen a speed sign. I don't know what the new speed is through here. I got 170 kilograms of coal in there. That's fun. Imagine there's a way to change the units on the HUD. To my freedom units. Oh, I can even see my tractive effort in kilonewtons. That's fun. And my power. Alright, what's my pressure? My pressure has still just disappeared. Can you come back, please, Mr. Pressure? We need you. We need steams to pull the train. Okay. There's a there's 16 car. There's a derail number. Uh, I, won I wonder what that means. Uh, oh, good to know that the whistle's not lost any of its character despite changing its sound file. Okay, so we can do 30 miles an hour at this. So I guess we'll just try to do that. And the needle is just kind of bobbing around like the real thing. Well, got the bar about halfway back. Scro sorry, scroll reverse, not the bar. And we'll see if we need need to get a little more power going, but... It's hard to tell if I need more coal or not. And each scoop, I'm putting about 30 kilograms of coal in each time. It's a big scoop. It's actually probably pretty accurate to like a number 5 shovel, though. In case you didn't know, there there are sized coal... Whistle says, hey, I know. Uh, <laughs> there are different sizes for coal scoops. And they're like specific sizes. We are losing speed very quickly. While well, we are going uphill. Do we just need all of the coal? 300 kilograms? Yeah, the stack's pretty clean now. So we'll just feed it, Seymour. And we'll, we're feeding it more bar as we slow down. Fire temp is still going up, though. That's good. 
Oh, and the pressure's coming back now. Okay, yeah. So it's just drastically under firing the heck out of it is what was going on. Oh, wow. I hope we don't lose it. More pressures, please. More steams. Is the, is the blower doing anything here? The blower still has a huge amount of control here, which is... It would not, but, I mean, again, that, that talks to the, the thing we were talking about previously. Also, 25 miles an hour through this diverging angle of this switch would just not happen. You would not be able to go 25 through this switch. I know that these units are just converted, but that's a, that's a base derail valley issue, I think. Are we already lined the right way? Yeah, of course. Give her another scoop. I like the individual uh, puffs. That's nice. The smoke overhaul with the, the realism overhaul looks really nice. Okay, start bringing the, the bar back. Gained a little bit of speed. Still, still coming up on the pressure, although, albeit nice and slow. Although if you were working an engine this hard and the gauge was still coming up like that, you would have had an inferno in the in the box. That's quite the fire. Not impossible, but a, a pretty a pretty sizable one. I wonder what the derail number that keeps bouncing around is. 45. I don't know if we're going to be able to get up to 45. Not even doing 20. Slong it in up the hill. Not sure. How many tons is this train? I didn't even look at their paperwork here. 616. That's, yeah, that's pretty heavy. It's not tonnage by any means. we got to drop it off at C3 inbound. No big deal. Okay. Okay. Yes, whistle. Hello. Let's see if we can't bring the bar back a little bit more. Now that we're getting a little bit more power out of it, got the throttle wide open, and we are now running with the bar. Scroll reverse, if you will. And we can put more power down if we push it forward, but we get less efficiency then. But we kind of want a little bit more power now, so that's pretty happy. You can see the fire is going down. Give it a couple of scoops here. Slight gray haze, British approved. <laughs> We're putting out 12,000 12, kilowatts of heat. Apparently is what the heat yield is saying. That's impressive. I mean, I guess it is a steam engine. It's supposed to do that. It is good at making steam. That is what it do. All right. Well, now we've, we've just got it wide open all the way in the corner. Gaining a little bit of speed here. And he's modeled the cutoff, max cutoff at 90%. I think Baldwin and everyone used 85, but 90 is probably fair. So you can never get more than 85% of boiler pressure in, I think, is, or it's an efficiency uh, calc like that. Got a little more speed, so I'll bring the bar back, get a little bit more efficiency. And uh, get the water going a little bit, just gently though. Just enough to stave off what we're using. Yeah, that's a control that could give you quite a lot of change pretty quickly, I think. Alright, now we're, we are really cooking now. He says, going 30 miles an hour. <laughs> well, that's track speed, baby. Which means we could just bring the bar back a little bit and just let it barely work. Perfect. This is this is actually kind of brilliant. When I tried this uh, the other night with all the mods again as my little preview, I, I had the train way over tonnage and it just um, it didn't make a whole lot of sense 
but this time it's working quite well and the whistle agrees. 45 coming up through here. Once we get around that curve. Get some more coal. There we go. Give it a little more power here. We got a new speed limit that we can get up to. <laughs> not f not for very long. Down to 35. God, this is this is. I love the smoke change with this. It feels a lot better than the fact that you know we got a nice gray haze going. It should go to clear. You know, I'll see if I could. I should turn off the HUD and I should try firing by the stack. I think that would be more fun. We got a 25 coming up right here. Okay. So we'll back off. And we'll go into application. There we are. Oh, that's challenging to kind of suss out with the keyboard controls. We got some amount of a reduction out on it. Okay, well just enough. We, we didn't get it down to track speed, but that's okay. We can go 45 diverging through this? Really? No, you can't. You'd be all over the ground. <laughs> yeah, most switches, um, unless they're really big switches, they tend to have like a 20 mile an hour, 25 mile an hour, maybe 30 mile an hour on some mainline switches uh, maximum speed. So 45, I mean, that would be a, a pretty long switch, and that just wasn't, wasn't a long switch at all. Oh yeah, we're coming up to MAWP here. Just maximum allowable working pressure. So maybe we can stop cheesing with the blower. Which if I had the blower on that long while actually running one of these, all I would have done is just lost water. Because it really does not do anything. I mean, it's like peeing in the ocean compared to uh, the, what the stack velocity exhaust does for you. So, Although we need some more, we need more coal in the hole here. And we can bring the bar back a little bit. So we're eating through pressure. Now it's coming back. I know we can go pretty fast through here, but I don't know how fast. So hopefully it's all fine. That whistle says, mm hmm, highball. Okay. I'm getting spooky sounds. I'm going to shut the throttle back a little. Now then it straightens out, so we're going to keep wide open on it keep it rolling <laughs> it's funny with miles an hour it's like we're not even doing 50 but it feels like we're doing 700 oh and I shut the throttle and the stack just goes completely black that's awesome that is absolutely what happens if you if you lose drafts BAM you just get yeah, it goes to, to gross pretty quick. And then I open the throttle and it cleans up. Oh man, that's, yeah, that's, that's fun. Fun and accurate. Cheers on that. That's brilliant. Okay. We're doing about 80 kilometers an hour, so the, uh, so the shovel says. Ooh, that's spicy. Okay, we can do 50 through here now. It's 50 miles an hour, which is what we're doing already. So, mmm. Well, that's fine, right? Keep the power on a little bit. 75! Let's just go for it. Give it the beans. Give it all she's got. Let's watch that pressure gauge disappear. Oh yeah, you can make it disappear if you put the bar really far in the, in the corner there. Okay, and we're doing about 60. Remember how I didn't quite figure out how the air brakes worked? Uh, or how the lapping worked out uh, before the last time I tried to set it up? Okay, 50. Alright, close. Let's get an application going. Okay. That ought to be pretty good. Lap it? No, I wanted to lap it. There we go. Lapped. Okay, and then kick it off. OK, 
Okay, that felt that felt pretty good. And we got a switch coming up, so I'm gonna try and set up another one here. God, it's hard to—I I will say—it is hard to tell exactly how far into the application or what region the brake valve is in. Oh, this is feeling spicy. Stop! Oh, lordy, that dumped it. It's fine. Well, that might have actually been what we needed. <laughs> that switch is a little sharp. That's fine. Brake cylinders still haven't recharged. Get open on it again. Give us some power to pull through that dump that we just did. And I guess we could go go back and see if we come back on you know one of these tank cars, if we could teleport on top of it. Yeah, our reservoirs are not recharged, and the brake cylinders still have, you know, probably 10 PSI on them, so. Yeah, God, I wish, uh, hopefully, hopefully there's a way to change it to PSI instead of bar. That way I can just, I know it's, I know it's like 14 and a half or 15. People have been commenting, this is the conversion. It's like, well, I don't want to be doing conversions in my head when I'm trying to just think of what the values I'm used to are, so. Okay. We're going to go downhill here, so we'll shut off and let it go. And we've derailed on this switch before, so we'll take a little set again. And lap it, theoretically. Yep, looks good. Okay, making it over the switch, kicking it off. And now we will run very far ahead and see whether our switch is lined or not. Because that sounds like a bad idea. Yep, it is not. Is that a mooing? <laughs> I don't know what that was. Weird sound. And hope that we did not stall or derail. Or get going way too fast, which is kind of what's going on. So we'll set them up, set them up. <laughs> and it doesn't help that the gauges, like, don't actually read anything. I should be using this HUD that I have. My brake pipe is still decreasing. And it sounds like the cars are releasing behind me. Set them up. Because when you release the cars, they, uh, I didn't even talk about releasing in the air brake video at all, which was probably a mistake, but for a lot of people, it doesn't make a huge difference because a lot of folks don't use retainers. But uh, you get to hear the, uh, the air release through the retainers. And I'm a little spooked by the switch, so I'm going to slam on my independent and pray. Uh... Okay, yeah, we did not get a big enough set early enough, but we uh, we had really awful train handling and slammed the independent on, and hopefully things don't start going kabang behind us. <laughs> Mobile kabangs. All right. So we're gonna start pulling through this. So we're gonna want a little bit of fuel. Okay, managed to not bin it there. And the whistle says, just watch. Just you wait. 55? Oh god, I don't know if I left switches open after I blew up the oil well the first time. We're gonna have to be ready with, not that remote, this remote. Switch. Okay, we're set to switch. We, we know. <laughs> we're, we're ready to, uh, to double check ourselves here. Okay, we're doing a little bit faster than I'd like, so we'll just dump the air. Perfect. And then immediately release it. Because that's not what we wanted to do. <laughs> I wonder if the scroll wheel is easier than the their buttons? No, I don't know. Pull I gotta pull through my own set here. I still haven't come back up on pressure. I guess I wasn't really drafting the fire. And I'd been putting water in, so. And our usage went down, so we've increased our levels significantly. It's the farm first, and then the oil well later, so... Theoretically, we should be okay. Alright, and things are starting to relax in there a little bit. We can bring the bar back. <laughs> I like how it says coal box on the, uh, on the HUD. I wonder if Zybok had to put the names in, or if that's what, uh... Dero Valley calls them innately. 
Because, yeah, firebox, not coal box. This is more accurately a coal box, because it only has coal in it. This has coal and fire and air. And the, and the whistle agrees. <laughs> oh, this is the grade crossing of the yard. That's right. <laughs> oh, lordy. Okay. Gently. I know that I did like 80 kilometers an hour through here last time. I guess I'm only doing 52, so that's slower. Duh. I could do 55, though. And bring the bar back. This is when, if it's going to get spicy, it'll probably be now. Oh, now it's 35. And we're doing, well, we're doing 40, so we'll just shut off and... Let it coast real quick. Okay, grab the... Oh, shite. Oh, no, that's right. No, that's good. That's lined. That is not lined. Okay. You thought you were going to get spicy, but no, you're just going to get me not blowing for the grade crossing because I'm terrified that I'm going to run into stuff. That's what you're going to get. All right. Now we can highball through the yard full of explosive things. <laughs> now that we've confirmed that we're not going to run into any of them. <laughs> and the whistle says, but I want to blow them up. We're going to have to get a translator in for that guy. What's the whistle saying this time? Okay, we'll shut back. We've got a 45 up through here. We're pretty much doing that. But I know we got some spaces to slow down up ahead, so we'll just let it roll. Watch the track ahead. Make sure that uh, <laughs> we're not going to be doing anything too silly. Because they got that next junction coming up. Yeah, this is um, this is a lot better with with the, with the mods like this. I really I really like this. Uh, the heads up display might be a touch. A touch much for me. Oh, and actually, I can see... Oh, it shows me the speeds as they come up. So we got a third... In 350 meters, we got 30 kmh. Oh, yeah, so we got we got a real slowdown pretty quick here. So we'll, we'll set them up. We are lined to the right. Take a nice, meaty set there. Lap it. Okay. 20 is the target. We'll kick it off. Let's let it slow down in. And now we'll open up on the throttle. Oh, interesting. You can stop the valve events pretty much from happening. Or at least the sound of them entirely if you bring the bar back far enough. So if you, if you roll the scroll reverse close to center, you can see that we still have a little bit of power going down, but we don't, we had hardly any chuffing sounds. Oh, and on the, the halfway indicator is not even near halfway cut off. Interesting. All that power comes at the end. I wonder if that's a geometry thing in the valve gear. That's cool. On the, on the real ones, typically with the slop and the pins and bushings, uh, unless you've got a perfectly brand new, perfect locomotive, and then it's also dependent on the type of valve gear. Um, it, at the closer you get to center, sometimes they'll stop being able to run. You can, like, you'll actually seal yourself off, so steam can't even get into the steam chest. It's where they go lame or where they go dead. You know, maybe it'll just be on one one stroke, one direction, that kind of thing, and that uh, that always messes with you a little bit. So it's a little weird. Okay, a C three I, and are, are we like coming into the city right now? Just about. We got one more interlocking to go through here. Okay, and we are lined up, and we have a thirty five speed. So we'll just keep trucking then. Um. So, yeah, as. Uh, and you know, you tend to notice where they go dead because uh, I've accidentally had 491. I hooked her up one two, 
one too many, and I got to where she went lame, and then I had the throttle far enough open that I went that one click back, and it took off like a bat out of hell. I mean, it was just ready to go. Because you, you basically charge all the steam up in the dry pipe and the superheater units if you have them um, ahead of that. So, And we're coming into the station here, so we'll take a nice little set, lap it. We are lined into the chunk of the yard that we want to go to, so we'll release that. Blow for the grade crossing. Okay. I'm sure the residents of City Southwest appreciate my loud grade crossing whistles. I know that the uh, neighbors of the Colorado Rared Museum don't. <laughs> Ask me how I know. Oh, C3 inbounds just nice and straight. Well, that's neat. Let's plunk all these switches in the right order here and uh, hop back in. Okay. Coming up on that X-crossing. Yep, here it is. Oh, that's weird. We can, we can Ed Dickens blow it where we go sideways with the cord and it'll do it. It wasn't a proper grade crossing sequence, but that's okay. <laughs> God, that's fun. Okay, it is C3 inbound, right? Right, double checking. Yep. Okay. Get the throttle open a little bit more. I think we're probably doing okay as far as time goes. We'll see. All right, now we'll start setting up the air a little bit. Take a pretty nice set there. That's uh, well, that's actually a massive set. I was looking at the the HUD instead, and I was like, oh, that was 15 bar we just set up. Oop, oop, oop. Hey, calmly, gently. I know what I just did to you, Choo Choo. I'm sorry. There's no way to bail off the independent in there, is there either? Come on, sweetheart. It's like, why'd you make me do this? It's not like I don't have to pay for a ridiculous amount of stuff anyways. You might as well grind the wheels flat, right? I'll actually shell the heck out of them, not grind them flat. But you get it. you get the idea. Okay, so we'll, wa we'll watch the HUD this time. I, w I like the HUD just for the, the brake pipe indication, I think. So we set up about there. Well, it's almost still a bar. Well, that's hard to control. Oh, we got enough speed behind us now that we're, we're dragging the train to a stop. And we'll just let the throttle come off. And then set the independent up a little bit. And then what we can really do is just dump the train, and then it'll just do its thing. All right, now let's go turn the job in. Do 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 do. Okay, here we are. Boop! Look at that. Twenty-seven minutes. Yeah, that's that's literally easy money. Almost a hundred grand. Well, we'll we'll enjoy that for the uh, the second that we have it. Only another hundred fifty to go. Okay, so yeah, it's a it's a bummer that the um the skin mod doesn't work, or it's not working like it's supposed to at least. I think it. Someone was saying on the forums that the steam engine doesn't accept it. the The smoke sim on this is just it's a thing of beauty. It makes me feel really happy. Um, one thing I did notice that's a little strange is um the way that the cars release. So on the real thing, um your brake cylinder releases through the retaining line and there's a retaining valve at the end that typically is dropped so that it doesn't retain air and the air just can vent and exhaust out. Um, but if it does, uh, if it is set to retain, depending on the different styles, there's many. Uh, the ones that I typically saw, you had like a 10 pound or a 20 pound position where you could retain that much air for however long and then it would reset. And that was used so you could recharge the brake pipe but keep some of the air on the train set up so that you didn't run away downhill. And uh, we didn't even really talk about that. But one thing I noticed is that 
if I go to recharge the train now, which is this button, I'll hear the, the cars start to reset. Yeah. But they, they, they do this for a long time. I don't know if it's just to uh, make the sound of flow, but uh, it is longer if you had a big set on, of course. But um, if you were to bleed this brake cylinder through a bleeder valve, it would blow this long. But when it exhausts out of the retaining pipe and the retainer, it goes... And then it's pretty much done. I mean, they release uh, pretty quick. So... Uh, that's a little, a little thing that could be improved or changed, or, or perhaps the sim is different than I'm understanding, but that, that's what I'm familiar with at the very least. Um, but that was the, like, that's like my one complaint now that I've got the, the more accurate version of the mods. Um, <laughs> there is another thing that I noticed that's a little goofy, and this isn't a mod thing, this is a Derail Valley thing. Do you see how we are clocked with the rods almost forward? Like, if we were to have a circle and f front of the engine's that way, boom, we're almost there. We'll come to the other side, and they're almost backwards. Which means that the wheels are offset 180 degrees, which, uh, if you know steam engines, just made you giggle. Because <laughs> these should just be... They should only be offset 90, right? Because if you're offset 180, that means when this piston is all the way at the front, the one on the other side's all the way at the back, which means that you, you're still at front and back dead center you need to have one that's in the middle while one's all the way at the front for this to work so you have to have the wheels clocked 90 degrees if you're you know a standard steam engine um and also the spring rigging doesn't connect to anything eh, it's fine <laughs> this is a funny thing but this is this is a brilliant piece of work um the the blower being as much of an inferno as it is i mean the stack just went clean I mean, it's kind of tough to actually do that. And there would be a slight delay, actually. You'd, you'd get... You have to wait until you exhausted all the smoke that was in the system out before you get the change in color, uh, before you start burning cleanly. So there's a bit of a delay. You'd crank the blower on. Usually you just get a huge huff of black smoke for two, three, eh, maybe five seconds. And then you'd start to get, you know, the, the cleaner exhaust. And you can bring them pretty clean with the blower for real, which is kind of scary, but... Um, yeah, that barely moves the needle a little bit, but the, the thing that's hilarious is that you can make the needle go bye-bye by just doing this. <laughs> and, and thermodynamically, I'm sure the calculations work out that that's, like, what they're supposed to do, but goodness gracious. Yeah, that's, um, that's a bit quick. It's quicker than you want to watch the needle go. And one thing that I didn't notice, and I don't know, um, why it isn't like this in The Sim, uh... And maybe it's something that Zybok and I can work on, but uh, it's something that's like a real phenomena that I've seen where you'll start to open the throttle as you start to work. And as you use the steam, you'll watch the gauge just go down just a little bit. Um, but if you had a sufficient good enough fire in there, your airflow, again, it has that same delay between the stack and the firebox like we were talking about. So uh, you'd start to lose, you know, you'd lose maybe a PSI or two, but then it would catch and hold. Uh, because you'd finally gotten that airflow in if your fire was right. But that was, you know, that's if your fire is right, which is uh, a whole other in-depth thing than what this simulates, Which and that's just how Dero Valley is, um, because you really have to place the coal, and that's, that's a whole other thing, and this firebox would absolutely not be sufficient for the size and pressure that this locomotive operates at. But, uh, yeah, it would be... You'd want probably f five or six times this amount of great area but that's all right that's one of the things that's not accurate but hey it's fun and it works for the game now the last thing that i do want to see is uh apparently he remodeled the safety valve after my feedback in the last video and so i'm just uh much like the real thing i'm waiting for the safety to lift and uh yeah it, um like the real thing sometimes it doesn't want to go i wonder if the real trick will work the funny thing is you could just be using just enough steam running through the blower that uh, as soon as you kick it off you're you, you get that extra bit of generation from the heat you'd added and you'd removed your usage of steam and that would be enough to pop the valve hey there we go safety's lifting look at that that looks brilliant it's a pretty accurate plume thankfully he didn't make it as loud as it's supposed to be because the safety is god awfully loud we could shut our blower off 
and it should blow back about five ish psi before stopping um but our steam generation is just off the charts so uh so it's just gonna go for a minute apparently all right let's see if we can shut it up with a, a big slug of water and it tapers off Oh, that's cool. He did a pretty good job modeling that. The um, We talked about the taper off a little bit, and they usually kind of do have a... They taper a little bit, and then they have a defined kind of as they close, but more sounds to add and things to do, but that's, uh, that's a really cool thing to see, so I'm happy that I was able to help collaborate with Zybok on that and uh, make that work. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this playthrough of Derail Valley today with a couple more mods. Uh, and it really starts to feel really good this way. So make sure you guys like the video if you did. Subscribe to the channel and click the little bell. And hey, we'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching.